Hello, I'm Silent Death, and welcome to the fourth episode of the Comprehensive Ferrum Aerospace Research Tutorial. In this episode, we'll be covering a list of vital mods for use with Ferrum Aerospace Research. There are a number of mods for Kerbal Space Program, a few of which I consider essential for use with FAR. First off, for flying planes, you need some kind of HUD that shows you your angle of attack, the difference between your heading and your velocity vector, something that has the artificial horizon, For that, the first mod I can recommend is what I'm using here, which is a Kerbal Flight Indicators. It's a fairly lightweight and fairly basic mod, but it does cover the essentials. Another option is Steam Gauges, which has a much more comprehensive HUD showing you a very 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 many things including your angle your radar altitude your speed as well as your Mach number your heading your thrust to weight and a number of other things Another thing you're going to want is something that shows your vertical speed as well as your horizontal speed. For that, I am using a Kerbal Engineer. I don't really have any other mods to recommend except for Kerbal Engineer. I think it's pretty much the only one to use for that as it's nice and lightweight. You will also want something that will show you your intake air usage. I say as I start running out of air. For that, you can use a Kerbal Engineer. The downside to Kerbal Engineer's intake air usage is it shows your air requirements for your current thrust level and not your air requirements until you're going to flame out. For flight data will show your air requirements until you're going to flame out. Once this drops below 100% you're in danger of flaming out. Another option, given that this is kind of intrusive, is Kerbal Flight Data. If we start starving our air a little bit, this will start telling us when we're getting a low on air. And when we're in danger of flaming out, it'll start to turn red. So, starting to get a little bit there, which just matches what Farb tells us. Kerbal flight data also displays a couple more important things. One is a stall warning. Two is your speed in Mach, which you can get from this, but again, this is less intrusive. It shows your temperature if you have a deadly reentry installed. Your dynamic pressure, Q, which you need to know. 
if you have aerodynamic failures enabled. One thing that you'll want that Kerbal Flight data does not display is your thrust to weight ratio and possibly your absolute thrust. Just so that you know how well your engines are performing and where you are in the velocity curve. You can, however, use Kerbal Engineer to display that data and still have a very unobtrusive display. Another option for intake air is a steam gauges air gauge. Intake air right there, which also shows you the Mach number. If we start trying to starve ourselves again, you can see as we drop below the amount of air to fully meet our needs, it gets into the yellow. And if we keep climbing and get in danger of flame out, it'll dip into the red. It also tells you your angle of attack and has a stall warning with your Mach number. If you intend to use a joystick or other such controller, advanced fly-by-wire is the place to go. As the built-in support for such things is not very good. For control, you may have noticed that the normal SAS is not very good for planes. It has a tendency to make you oscillate like this, especially if you're trying to time accelerate. It's not good at all. And it also has difficulty holding your heading. To help with that, we have Pilot Assistant, which has a number of options. One of those is the SAS module. If you decrease the KP values by one third and the scalar values by half, you will get something that is far better. for time warping. Also included is the pilot assistant which can hold a heading, can hold your wings level, can hold a vertical speed, are hold an altitude and can also hold a absolute speed. All of these are very good for making long flights in the atmosphere and allowing you to time accelerate through them. As I've mentioned earlier, Slowing down with Ferrum Aerospace is far more difficult than with stock. An approach that will have you touching down at a slow 50 meters per second in stock may have you flying over the runway at closer to Mach 1. To help with that, there are a couple of different things you can use. One is air brakes. And there are two different mods for air brakes. 
One is B9 Aerospace, which along with air brakes adds a great many things. And as I've already mentioned, does change the engine's velocity curves. However, you can delete that one file and go back to using firm airspace velocity curves. Another option for air brakes is STX air brakes, which is a very lightweight pack that only includes three air brakes. This is a sub pack of the STX mod, which includes a, a number of parts. So you can just get the air brakes separately if you don't want the other stuff or if you're perhaps low on memory. These are the three air brakes included with STX air brakes. And these two air brakes are included with the B9. Additionally, you may also wish to include Real Shoots mod, as it provides you with the option of using a drag shoots. Unlike with stock, Real Shoots allows you to deploy shoots that do not automatically disappear when you touch the ground. I'm intentionally landing at very high speeds. and using real shoots to slow me down. <laughs> Not a perfect landing, but still a lot easier than without real shoots. Real Shoots is not a replacement for air brakes, but something that can help augment air brakes. There are also some tools for building your planes. First off is, of course, Kerbal Engineer. While the Delta V is not particularly accurate with air breathing engines, it is still something you will want to know when you're combining air breathing engines with rocket engines. You will also want to know your thrust to weight ratio, at least your maximum thrust to weight ratio. Another mod that I consider essential is B9 procedural parts. This is a different mod than B9 Aerospace, though it is made by the same person. It adds these three parts. One is an all-moving control surface that is used for canards and other such things. Then procedural control surfaces of this type and of course procedural wings. And you've seen me use this in previous episodes where you can easily adjust your wings. This will greatly improve your understanding of the far stability derivatives as you can make minor changes to your craft relatively easily and see how they affect your stability. Moreover, it allows you to put fuel inside of the wings, which will significantly increase the ability to produce a good looking designs. It'll also make your planes less draggy as you will need a fewer parts. 
Another absolutely vital mod for use with Ferrum Aerospace is procedural fairings. There are a number of mods that add fairings by themselves or as part of a mod pack. However, I prefer procedural fairings just for their versatility. They add few parts and are well integrated into the tech tree. Here is a quick example of procedural fairings at work. We have one of the procedural fairing bases. Then if we attach something on it, it automatically puts these little lines over it. And using symmetry, We can place the parts and it will automatically enshroud whatever we stick inside them. And they appear as decouplers. Quite useful for Ferrum Aerospace. Another useful tool when building your vessel is RCS Build Aid. Some of the things that it provides is showing you your D center of mass, your delta center of mass, how much your center of mass will change due to using up fuel. It only shows the change in center of mass due to using up fuel and not the change in center of mass due to staging. So if you have a cargo, it will not show your sensor of mass change due to ejecting the cargo. And you can toggle which resources it uses up and which it doesn't. It'll tell you the absolute value of how much your sensor of mass changes. It'll also show you your average sensor of mass. And if we adjust things a little bit, we can get a better view of that. It'll also show you your torque due to engines. And of course, You can use it to help balance RCS thrusters. Like that. Another useful mod is the intake build aid mod. As I mentioned in a previous episode, how the intake air is distributed to engines depends on the order the intakes and engines are placed. Over here, you can see the problem. Our first turbojet engine gets all the air first. And then the second turbojet engine gets whatever happens to be left over. What we would rather have happen is to have the intakes split between the two engines. We can highlight an engine and press F6 and it will show us all the intakes that are assigned to that engine. This guy does not have any assigned. The same works if we highlight an intake, it will tell us which engine it is assigned to. And if we click auto arrange, now then each engine has its own intakes. So those have those two intakes and that one has those two intakes. Quite useful and a bit of a headache saver. With the previous discussion, of the position of center of lift relative to the center of mass. 
it should come as no surprise that shifts in the center of mass due to fuel consumption is a bit of a concern. To help with that, I recommend good speed automatic fuel pumps. It adds these two buttons here, auto pump and balance, and this lighter here, which goes from zero all the way up to eight. The slider is the priority at receiving fuel, with a zero being the highest priority and eight being the lowest priority. Auto pump means it will pump from a lower priority to a higher priority. Balance means it will balance the tanks between all things that are at the same pump level. So if you choose to balance all your tanks, your center of lift may not shift at all unless you have mixed types of fuel tanks, such as some tanks have oxidizers and some tanks do not. For instance, this particular craft, without using any kind of fuel pumps, would just burn all the fuel up from these radial engine bodies and not have access to the fuel in either of these because there are no fuel lines. However, we have these set to auto pump and balance so that all tanks are balanced and our center of mass does not shift at all. If we wanted the center of mass to shift forward as we consume fuel, we could set this to pump level one and then the fuel would be pumped out of here first and then balanced between these three after this one had consumed all the fuel. All in all, I can highly recommend this mod as it does not even use a significant amount of RAM. Another mod that you have seen me use before is the adjustable landing gear mod, which simply adds two adjustable landing gear, a small one and a medium one. They have a number of features. One is this adjustment guide or alignment guide to allow you to see the relative angles between the two. Another one is you can auto align the wheels to make sure that they're level on the runway. You can also, of course, adjust the height. And unlike other landing gear, this has suspension which is also adjustable, spring and dampener here. Change the angle of the leg. And then again, auto align the wheels. And of course you can toggle heat shielding and all of that stuff. Very, very useful for making sure that your plane has the right pitch on the runway. The suspension helps with landing on rough terrain. And it also has a toggleable heat shield for use with a deadly re-entry. It is surprising how useful this little mod is. I can highly recommend it. That is it for this episode. The next episode will cover the uh, scary stability derivative page. If you have any questions about what was covered in this episode, leave a comment below and I will do my best to answer them. A like if you like. Subscribe if you're not. Thanks for watching. 
and I will see you next time.